a Big Spark Studios original. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, was that loud? I'm getting the sense that that was really loud, and I apologize to my crew. Hey, everybody, what is up? And welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens, the podcast that really, we're still here. Who would have thought? Um, Now, before we get into the episode, be sure to subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens wherever you get your podcasts. If you like video episodes, we upload those to youtube.com slash Chris. And as always, be sure to rate and review our podcast after each listen with five stars and a nice little note that will make me feel better. Right? I don't want the truth. I want lies. (laughs) Um, So I need to turn off my text messages because, wow, am I getting lit up right now and not in the way I would like to be getting lit up at 1.27 p.m. on a Thursday. Um, Today's episode is going to be all about something that I am... I think is currently the source of a lot of my depression, which is dating. Bow, bow, bow. Oh, I do have an effect for that shit. Where is it? Um, air horn. Woo! Okay, yeah. Who's having a fucking blast? <laughs> who's driven off the road? Now, uh, dating is something that is just, oh, God, not in my wheelhouse, I don't think. I don't know. I have a lot of a lot of feelings. Now, before I get to those feelings, I do want to shout out today's little uh, shout out. I don't know why I am having trouble talking today, but I found this one in my email, chris at chrisclemens.com. Hey, Chris, I'm Carly. I'm a huge fan of yours and have been forever. My cousin Olivia at one years old went into liver failure and her medical bills are now over half a million dollars. I'm going to link the GoFundMe and it has the whole story on it. I would love to see how your Clementines would be able to help. And I so, so appreciate you taking your time to read this. Thank you. I love you. I just think like what a really heavy thing to have to go to and your one-year-old at that. I know it's their cousin, but it's someone's one-year-old. Um, and I just think it's brutal. And I love the way that we come together and help people around us. Uh, so the link will be down below if you want to donate to their GoFundMe. And without further ado, let's talk about my feelings towards dating. Because <laughs> they're not great. Uh, no, I just... it's Dating has been hard for me because growing up, I like knew that I liked like women, but I also knew that I liked men. And I didn't really want to date anybody in Delaware because I was like, first of all, what a weird hot take that would be. And I just like, yeah, I just felt too awkward to like date anybody in Delaware. So that was just, I mean, I asked people out and I like got rejected and I was like, (laughs) sick. Um, So that I think is the start of my dating trauma. But then when I moved to New York for college, I was a lot more not adventurous. <laughs> Honestly, it was more careless. I <laughs> I entered the time of my life where I started having sex with strangers, <laughs> uh, which was really fun. I think I've talked about the time that I hooked up with what turned to be a, what turned out to be a mother with two kids that I read bedtime stories to. Damn. Yeah, that was a pretty heavy one. Her you put them all to bed. I put them to literal bed. <laughs> there was like no mention of kids. They're like, I don't remember. I'm trying to think. I've told the story a million fucking times. I feel. I mean, I've never heard it. Where'd you guys meet? Uh, we met on Tinder, or I think it was Tinder because it was like when I was in college, and I think that was like the big one. Um, but I was just like, I am open to everybody of all ages. <laughs> was your your range? Yeah. Your range was like. Rrr. I don't think it was like. Rrr. Like it's my range is definitely kind of rrr now because I'm like, all right, we need to stop casting such a small net. <laughs> but yeah, I it was like adventurous. I was like, listen, I'm down for a. Four- well, how old was she? I think she was like in her forties, maybe late thirties. The way that I used to remember every detail of the story, and then I guess I've just repressed it. But yeah, we met, and she was like, come over. Um, I I think she was like in the Upper East or West Side. I think East. And 
yeah, I went over and I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. I was like a little buzzed. Um, and I walk in to literal two kids. <laughs> like, they were like kids where it wasn't like they were old enough to be like, I can talk to you like somewhat of an adult. They were both like five and seven or something. Like, it was like still young, but they knew what was going on. It wasn't like an infant. Or was it? I, like, see, I don't understand ch- child development. Like, to me, when you say that, like, someone's in first grade, I'm like, oh, okay, they're 10. <laughs> no, that's, like, all fully what? Like, a middle schooler? <laughs> so I just, I don't really have a great concept of all of that shit. So, yeah, that, there was a time that I hooked up with this guy in New York before I left, and um, he was a veteran and had a PTSD episode as we were hooking up. Yeah, I literally sound like a Parks and Rec sketch, an episode. It is so dark. It is, some might say, zero dark 30. Nice. <laughs> Was this like mid hookup? Yes. Like, dick out. <laughs> like, I could still point you to the person's apartment because of how traumatized I am from it. I'm like, did oh he my. Say what, did, he, did he say what triggered it? I don't rem- I I used to know the answer to this. But it was like something that I said or something that we were doing. Hmm. He's repressed it. I just I remember it like literally cuz that was like at the age where I'm like, "Oh, this was like just before I left New York to move to Los Angeles." And I was like at the age where like I had I had watched some murder docs and shit and I'm like, "Oh my god, having sex with strangers like they could kill you." So, like, there was, a, like, a little aspect of that on the brain of, like, I wasn't fully a careless young adult. I was, like, kind of getting an understanding of the world around me. And I was, I just remember being, like, on edge already because I'm, like, I'm in a dark apartment. Never would have guessed I'd be in an apartment in this area. Um, yeah. And it was, I mean, it, I'm so glad that that happened because I really was not having a great time to begin with. Um, Wow, how did this already come out? We're like 10 minutes into the episode and I've like already brought up the veteran PTSD story. Oh, God, yeah. I just, I don't understand why. Like, I, oh, so I looked at dating very differently because I was like, I'm career oriented. Like if I'm going to get in a relationship, I want to be able to take care of the person. I want to be able to just like be there. They're like, you're in a committed relationship. I wanted to make sure I was able to give 110% of me. And so, and I'm also someone who dates where it's like, if I don't see this panning out for the long run, like for those reasons, I'm out. So I just, I've never been like a casual dater. I've been a casual sleeper. Um, And it's, tough coming into this place where now I'm definitely wanting to get into a relationship. Like I've made my money. I've built my career. Um, Like, I mean, girl, there's still both of those things still to do, but I, I'm just at that point where I want to like have my person and it feels really fucking demoralizing to like, I'm not, I have this confidence issue where it's like, I know deep down gun to my head that I'm funny. I'm caring. I'm a good person, like all of this. And I'm like decently attractive, you know, like on the grand spectrum of like attractiveness, I'm still towards the top level, but I know I'm not like David Beckham. (laughs) David Beckham is the ultimate. (laughs) No, I mean, but I'm just. David Beckham's off the market. You're fine. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) No competition. You have to compete. You're good. I have stories about that, but (laughs) that I literally will have to take to my grave unless he gets to his first. But um, yeah, I just am at this point where I'm like, okay. And the same rules still apply where I'm like, I don't want to date someone if like spending the rest of my life with them, I can't see. So I I just, I don't understand why it's so hard for me to find someone when I know that at the end of the day, as cheesy as it sounds, I'm a catch. Um, I just, it like, 
it fucks with your head because you're like, am I, what, what is the thing that it seems to be turning everybody away from, oh, I'm actually not looking for a relationship. Oh, I just wanted to be friends. Like, oh, I just, oh my God, it is so fucking demoralizing. I just matched with someone. I have one dating app and it is Raya. (laughs) Um, And I don't actually even really use it for like dating, although that's how this next story comes about. Um, I just use it mostly for entertainment to see like (laughs) dating apps are truly, that might be like its own episode because I find them to be a modern day study, but I have Ryan. I matched with someone and we were talking and I mean, it seemed so flirty and maybe that's my problem is that, and I'm also not good at keeping it chill. Like when I like you, it's like, all right, let's jump to the chase. I'm like, I'm not here for like the foreplay of relation. I'm like, do you have an attraction to me? Great. Do I have an attraction to you? Great. Like, let's, yeah, it's good to get to know each other, but like, I'm not saying like, let's be official, but like, so I was talking to this person and we were talking about like, we're, we're going to retire to Portofino. And like, it just took like that flirty, like, this is our future. And, like, months have gone by. Months. Months. And the day of my Nana's funeral, I'm talking to this person, and I don't know how it came up. Honestly, should I just open the phone? It is so... Yes. It is so brutal. Is is this texting or is this video chat? How are you communicating? We, we FaceTime a lot. We text a lot. Blah, blah, blah. So um, they text me on February. Oh, my God. My Nana's service was on Valentine's Day. So this is all happening on Valentine's Day. Oh, my God. This is why I'm fucking consistently single. It's because I'm pulling this shit on Valentine's Day, not even realizing it's fucking Valentine's Day. <laughs> they say, how are you? And I said, not a great day, but there's always tomorrow. Um, they were like, did something happen? Or are you just low today? And I was like, it's my Nana's funeral. And they were like, Oh my God, it's today. Um, I saw your close friends, but didn't put that together. Oh, I'm so sorry, Chris. Um, how was it? And I was like, it's okay. How would you know? It was cathartic, but so hard. So, so hard. And then they were like, you should have told me. And I said, I know, but I feel like I've been annoying with my sadness. And they, (laughs) they were like, what? Never. And I go, I don't know. I get so in my head. I'm literally reading my text message on my podcast. This is so fucking embarrassing. And <laughs> they go, you don't have to. I'm your friend. That's what friends are for. Mm. Oh. And, and so I was just <laughs> thinking like, maybe they didn't want to put like a label on it or like, they don't want to be like that. Like that's what emotionally romantic connected people are for. Like, you know, like, so I was like, so I made a joke. Cause like anything, I'm like, we're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm Chris Hansen, and this is Watch What Happens live <laughs> or something. I don't know. Um, I, said, I said, I just don't want to be annoying, LMAO, but thank you. Ugh, did I? I no, I went, uh, did I just get friend zoned, winky face? And they go, shut up. Haha, you are my friend. Uh, you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with me. Oh. Um. And I hate that because I'm like, no, bitch, I've already made the decision that I do. Yeah, like let me come up with that. I hate that because it it's, almost seems like like bait to two or something. Yes. like you wouldn't want a relationship with me, and you're like, now do I have to be like, oh? Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm the bitch who throws the pity party. Okay, I'm the host. <laughs> I don't know if I read that entirely as 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 friend zone. I think that could be like, oh no, I want to be. Well, he's not done yet. Well, yeah, bitch, hold hold that thought. I go, why? They go, I'm awful. My relationships never lasted. And then I said, because you've never met me, LOL. Nice. (laughs) And to which I got a ha ha on that. And then they go, I'm not invested in building a relationship. Like, damn. And after seeing my ex reminded me of all my trust issues. (gasps) Ew. Um, What? What? And so I ghosted. Yeah. Oh. And then they were like, where have you been? And I'm like, I still haven't really, I should have just been direct and been like, I'm not looking to build a friendship because like, I'm not, especially when you live on a different continent. 
continent. Um, it just sucks because it felt like, like we FaceTimed like daily. Wow. Like, and it's not like, it's not like my best friend Katya or Eileen or Dory or Taylor. Be- like, it's not like us FaceTiming daily, which we don't even fucking do. <laughs> like, I just. Because you feel like you're building towards something too. Yeah. I just, I feel like I actually was like, whoa, someone I like and am attracted to feels the same. And then it just was like, boop. Yeah. It was like, when are you coming to visit? We've got to do all this to get... And I'm like, oh, my fucking God, kill me. I wouldn't take that as a reflection on you, though, so much. But how do I not... How do I not internalize that as another notch on the belt of unwanted? You know? There's a lot of flaky people. I get that, but, like... How are those statistics coming about that I'm finding every single fucking one of them? Because it's all random. Yeah, and that person is not. I, I I think that person came to the app for a specific reason that has nothing to do with you. Which is what then? Fuck around. Why were you talking about re- where we're retiring together? Because you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <sighs> No, don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, I'm like, there's still, there's still hope. And I'm like, no, bitch. Wait, you said there were a different continent, Chris. Right? You said different continent. Is this somebody you met in Antarctica? <laughs> yeah, it's a penguin. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, is, it, is it a chin step? Chin step. My penguin? name is Shane Dawson, and I'm in love with a penguin. <laughs> I don't know. It's just this, like, God. It's just so fucking hard out here for a hoe. What do you think the end game? What are you looking for in a person, Chris? How, what are you looking for? Willing, I guess. Like, I, literally, a heartbeat, a pulse. Feet with nice arches. No, no feet, ideally. No feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I just, like, I feel like my standards are so low, and then someone comes by, and I'm like, nope, they are just as high as I am. So. Yeah, I don't, ugh, I don't get it. Like, I'm not going to read all of the messages, but it's like, when we first started talking, it was like, oh my God, you seem like someone I want to be around all the time. And da, da, and it's like, oh my God, fuck people. <laughs> Which is all I'm trying to do. <laughs> if, especially if he's on like a different continent. It's like, you guys are both playing like this fantasy thing. No, it seems like only one of us is and it's me. No, I think so. No, he's still end. playing. He's, he's still like, like he's, reaching out to you. And he's talking about like you're both talking about like long term, like when you guys are old and like retired and stuff and shit like that. That's just like playing like not house, but like life. <laughs> playing like my love life. Yeah. Yeah, but why are you playing that if you just want to be friends? If your intention's to just be friends, why would you even play that game? I wouldn't play that game with someone I just met and wanted as a friend. Yeah, because they're probably, like, unempathetic and maybe narcissistic. People are weird. <laughs> I, I've heard of, like, very similar situations with, with friends where it's, like, this long, uh, you know, correspondence, like, day-to-day and the FaceTiming and you get used to it. And then it's, like, what? You just want to be friends? I- and now I'm, like, wait, we're – or what? <laughs> I'm, like, huh? Hello? Where am I? Yeah, I just don't get it. Like – you gotta, you gotta shake it off. We can't use that. We'll get sued by Miss Swift. You gotta dust. Your, you gotta pick <laughs> yourself up off the ground and dust yourself off. Well, how did you find your girlfriend? Like hinge, and there wasn't like. Did you guys talk normal? Like how we have the same name? So I was like, we have the same. I was like, that's chaotic. <laughs> Okay, so, so I just need to find someone whose name is Chris, Christina. S- specifically, yeah. like, so I had a, a bunch of photos of me, and then I had one photo of an, an iguana wearing a cowboy hat. Totally. As, like, my, like, ha-ha photo. That was part of your strategy. It was, like, a ha-ha photo. But you said, like, one photo has to be, like, a funny... And, yeah, because I feel like... Hey, Chris, you have a cowboy hat? <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely think that like there has to be a funny photo, like a personality pic. Yeah, but so she had a bearded dragon, and so she responded to that photo. So sometimes I think if I hadn't put that like silly little photo, then I wouldn't. We would never have met. See, but like I'm looking at my pictures, and they're like 
solid. So, like, to start off, we have this picture of me. And then it goes to, like, okay, I'm cool and whatever. And then it's, fuck, yeah, I'm a triple threat. I don't know shit. I don't get stuff. And it's, like, I don't understand things. (laughs) Okay, so I'm funny. I like that. And then it's, like, okay. Oh, that's cute. It's, like, okay, got some eyes, got some, whoa, fashion, got some hot bathtub. I have me praying to a cross-shaped joint, like, (laughs) ass man. Like, I... (laughs) I would I would fucking Aww. date me. So like, are oh, you kidding sick. me? Me on a big uh. screen with saying Chris, like, like, okay, me in bed. I wish I would had someone who <laughs> That's and a like, lot of photos though. That's a that's a lot of photos. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Also the ju- also the Jumbotron one might be a little intimidating. Yeah, that, that's Chris wasn't asking for your guys' judgment. Or were you? I don't know what I was looking for showing you all that, but okay, w- w- I regret it. Will you open yourself up to criticism? <laughs> I open it up to criticism. 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 I'm just thinking if I'm a director and I'm casting, right? So if I'm casting people and I, I look Well, at- you're not a director and you're not casting, okay? I'm <laughs> trying to get fucking consistently laid by the same person. <laughs> you got to think about this as an audition. So like I've looked at casting sites and when people are submitting and you go through and it's what piques your interest that you stay with it. And I am almost positive that this is, well, that's why I have so many goddamn pictures, but that's too many pictures. It's too confused. There's so much. You got to tell that story fast. Okay. Sam and Justin, do you think that that was too many pictures? How many pictures are you allotted on Raya? I think like 20, maybe, I don't know. Am I wrong? I thought that's a lot of pictures. There's a lot of pictures. Well, but what's the step? But, but if that's the standard on Raya, then that's not too many. If True. That's what- but also, it's like I'd rather have people see just like at all. Yeah. No, 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 no. You want to? You want to give a mystery? Have an air of mystique. Oh, mystique. No, because then the same thing I just vented about happens, where it's like they get to fucking know you, and they're like, "Holy shit, gross!" And you've already f- grown attached. But Chris, you're 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 also a public figure, though. So like, they're going to know. Like, I think anybody who you start to communicate with is going to maybe start, you know, checking out certain socials and things like Which that. Which is fine. I just don't want them to start out knowing. Mm. Yeah. Well, I feel like because then it's like if if like anything happens or we break up or I mean anything, it's like then they're like, oh my god. Chris, I have the dirt on Chris. I don't know. I get so paranoid. Well, that is the creepy thing now that when you meet someone, if you're in the mood afterwards, you can just go look up everything about them. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and so I don't think it, I don't know if it's too many pictures. Like, maybe it is good to keep a little. Yeah. I mean, maybe I should take some down and have some mystery and mystery. But... And that's the thing. I'm like, None of them are bad. Hey, what if we pick the pictures? I would rather just lay in the road and get this over with quicker. <laughs> but I think it'd be a cool experiment if we pick the pictures, right? What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think that would be a cool experiment if it wasn't something that I'm trying to take seriously right now. It's like me being like, why don't you guys take over the vlog this week? Which, if you guys are interested, comment down below. I'd love a week off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's... It is just, I don't get it. And I've talked to some of my friends about it where it's just like, I know I would be the best partner. Well, not the best, but like, I'd be a good one. Do your buddies have suggestions for you? People who they think they want to sit up with? No, because they're all like either married or in relationships that have been like years long. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is fucking. Wouldn't they they have the best advice? No, because they did like what works for them and shut up. Okay, maybe they do. Fuck. Do they know that you are interested in in finding someone and like have they offered to like set you up before? Or have you No, I mean I think even Helen Keller has heard that I am interested in someone. <laughs> <laughs> have you asked them to set you up? See, I should do the whole setup. But again, I'm just so so particular and then it's like you've met the person in person and then it's like ah i just don't like you and then i'm being the person that i hate experiencing but i guess someone's got to do it in a situation bro 
like literally sitting here, I'm like, okay, maybe I understand arranged marriages. <laughs> but I mean, maybe I get it. Like an arranged like hangout or like group thing where it doesn't have to be like blind, uh, blind date. A, a, it doesn't have to be a blind date. It could just be. I no, know. I mean, I get that, and I really, I guess, beggars can't be choosers. God, that's so pathetic that I'm talking about my love life, and it's like I am literally a beggar. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It just feels hard seeing everyone around you seeming like they're in a relationship and a happy one. And obviously, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, and not everything is the way it appears. But it's like, oh my God, like, oh my God. If I see one more fucking cute tiktok couple i'm gonna throw my phone through a window and then be pissed that i have to pay for a new window like <laughs> but maybe the maybe somebody and, the person who comes to fix the window <laughs> well now we're <laughs> the person who fixes the window will be straight as a fucking doorknob bitch <laughs> i mean or i guess a doorknob doesn't well my doorknobs are straight my doorknobs would never be gay. We live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get it on with the rest of the episode, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Mind Bloom. If you do not know, Mind Bloom is the leader in at home ketamine therapy for people looking for a new way to treat their anxiety and depression. They combine science backed medicine with a guided treatment plan that is both affordable and fast acting. Now, to begin, take Mind Bloom's online assessment and schedule a video consult with a licensed psychiatric clinician. And if you are approved, you'll work with Mind Bloom on your specific treatment plan and you'll be mailed a customized kit complete with medicine, a journal, and treatment materials. Now, after only two sessions, 87% of Mind Bloom clients reported improvements in depression and 85% reported improvements in anxiety. It's time to enter your next chapter in mental health and well being, which is amazing timing because right now, Mind Bloom is offering our listeners $100 off when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash unhinged and use promo code unhinged at checkout. Go to mindbloom.com unhinged, promo code unhinged for $100 off your first six session program today. Achieve transformational outcomes with Mind Bloom. Again, by going to mindbloom.com slash unhinged, promo code unhinged. Thank you so much. And let's get back to this episode. I don't know. Uh, I posted on my Instagram story to call in if any of y'all are having dating troubles, have crazy dating experiences, um, just kind of anything that we've talked about. And I posted this on my Instagram story at Chris Clemens. We also have Unhinged with Chris Clemens on Instagram if you want to follow them as well. But um, I had y'all call in to 310-844-6459 where you guys... I assume left us some good stuff. Sam said that. Wait, wait, wait. I think I fixed your problem though. We'll we'll just have for next week the callers call into audition to date you. No, because sadly, I there is a shallow level of me where it's like I do want to see their appearance as well. <laughs> well, they'll send in a photo as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for that. We'll have them do. Yeah. <laughs> is that okay? If y'all want to organize this little charade, go for it. I mean, th- we do have secrets, and people could write in and share their secret affection. No, guys, I feel like we're, I'm getting set up for it, like public failure. Let's just hear a goddamn voicemail that someone left, please. <laughs> <laughs> like on the edge of my very. Hi, Chris. I was just calling because I am wondering: is it so wrong to not want to have sex on the first date? No. Listen, no shame. Absolutely no shame to people who do, but I personally cannot get on board with that i don't like having sex with strangers sorry i just can't do it but like it just seems like i don't know if the guys i date are just complete dickheads well they are nonetheless regardless of the answer to this question but it's like it just seems to them like like as soon as they realize i'm not going to have sex with them on again the first date not the second not the second the first date if I do not have sex with them on the first date, they're no longer interested, which is like, I mean, it's fine because that just saves me the trouble later. If that's really a problem to them, then it's like, I'm really not losing anything. But at the same time, it just blows my mind that that's even a concept that like you were interested in me in terms of romance, not even just like sexual things 
you were interested in me until I didn't want to have sex with you on the very first date. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Yeah, no, I definitely think that they weren't romantically into you. They were sexually into you, which is also fine. Unless you don't want to have sex on the first date, which I think is also absolutely fine. I do not think you need to give it up on the first date. If it happens, then great. But I think, see, this is where maybe I am shooting myself in the foot. Because, like, I would put on my dating app, won't have sex on the first date. Just so it's, like, saving the time even more so. And then it's just, like, anybody who matches, I would assume, has read that. Um, But knowing the IQ of men, uh, probably not. But, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I definitely wouldn't mind having sex on the first date. But I'm not like, I need to, and you must. It's not a given. Yeah, like, and I'm fine with that because I definitely think before, like, engagement or marriage, you should absolutely have sex with someone if that's something that you want in the relationship because that is a huge part of a relationship to some people and I would say to most people. Um, But... So you're saying you have sex somewhere between the first date and when you get married? I absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Is that wrong? <laughs> it is the wide. <laughs> no, it's the widest range ever. But that's what I'm saying. Is so like at some point, some point we're gonna get it in. See, there's so much time to have sex, and I'm having none of it. Can you believe? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, no, girl. I think you're totally valid for not wanting to have sex on the first date. I would just maybe be like more open about it in a way that isn't like I hate fun, but it's like <laughs> you know because you don't want to be like, "Hi, my name's Evelyn, and I don't have sex on the first date because then it's like, "Whoa, <laughs> you must be f- fun at parties." <laughs> I mean, don't people say like not looking for a hookup or something like that? I feel like that would convey that like I'm not gonna yeah, like- oh, that's so true. There's like much more eloquent ways of saying it instead of being a just direct. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> no sex. Um, yeah, I think I think there's ways to just kind of advertise it off the start. Maybe you're like in a picture and you're like, who holding a sign and it says no sex on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> or just like something funny, you know? There's a way to make it fun, maybe. <laughs> oh God, meanwhile, I'm like, I'll have sex before we even see each other. Like I'm fucking down. <laughs> um, no, but I don't think you're wrong. I think that's a good debate. What do you guys think? Are you anti-sex on the first date? I think it's smart because you want to see if you like the person, right? Maybe this person is looking. It depends on what they're looking for. If they're looking for a hookup, then, of course, that's off the table. But if they're not looking for a hookup, I think it's really smart. If they want a relationship, they can see if they like the person and if there's real chemistry. Because maybe sex on the first date might cloud the judgment of what they feel for the person. Are you kidding me with that alarm? <laughs> and that's and that's his time, Your Honor. <laughs> Justin, Sam. Um, I think it's cool not to have sex on the first date. I've done both. <laughs> um, thank you for letting us know that you had sex on a first date. I have, in fact. Um, no, but I think I usually I would usually opt to not have sex on the first date. Yeah, I I would also agree with that. But like, there are definitely are times where it's like you're going into it wanting sex. Yeah, and that's also okay. But I, I think normally, I think you're pretty normal for feeling that way. I don't know. Let's hear another one. Do we have another? Hey, Chris. Hey. It's Liv. I'm from New Jersey. Hey, Liv from I New to Jersey. Ask you and like the crew. Basically, I need advice because I just recently got out of a three-year relationship with a man, and I'm a woman, so a heterosexual relationship. And I, you know, among one of the many reasons why I broke up with him was because I kind of want to explore my sexuality, and recently I kind of, like, looked up with a girl, and I basically agree. I just need advice on, like, how to go about this because I've only ever really done anything with men and I just want to know like how it's different what I should do because the thing is I do have a lot of queer people in my life that could give me advice but I don't know I just want to hear it from like a third party like non-biased party 
because I don't know. I just like I'm a little nervous and like maybe how to get over my fear of flirting with women because I'm like so inexperienced with it that I get super nervous. So yeah, any advice would be great. Thank you so much. Love you, Chris. Bye. Oh my god, love you. And I love this bi era you're in. Um it is a phase. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I think just there's a lot of reading the room and a lot of things feel scarier than they are when you are experimenting. But I say just like trust your gut and... Like, don't be afraid to, one, tell the person, like, hey, I'm experimenting. Like, don't really have much experience in this. Because, one, that's, like, almost, that's, like, endearing in a way to be, like, oh, my God, I'm honored that you, da, 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 da. But, yeah, I mean, just don't be scared about being bad at something or not knowing something or anything, because I think there's a way to turn that into a really endearing moment. And there are going to be people who won't want to hold your hand through it all and guide you through it because they've either probably already had multiple people want their help on their own thing where it's like, they might just, they're done helping people through it. They're like, okay, I need to look for someone for myself. I definitely think that that's like, I mean, I know that that's a thing of like, I'm not looking for anybody who's going to keep me a secret or this or that. And that's totally valid on their end. But I would just be open and honest and direct and see where that leads you. I don't know if I just said anything that made sense. I feel like I just gave one of those like Miss Universe. Like, <laughs> what would you do to stop the Middle East tensions? And I feel like I just gave an answer. Um, that must be a tough spot, though, if like people are consistently using you to explore themselves. It's like a very... Well, yeah, that's why that's like a big thing. I just I, I think sometimes people might be turned off to the fact that you're exploring it, not because they don't approve or anything, but because they've also probably had people do that with them. And I've done that with people and people have done that with me. And it's, you know, it's, it's just the process of it. They're like, not for me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's so fair for them to say that is a turnoff for me, you know? Um, but I just don't let that like discourage you or cast, uh, any kind of shadow on who you are as a person because it it's two very big moving parts that are coming together and might not fit. What about the part where she asked about how to be more confident flirting with girls? Cause it was new to her. Uh, yes. Thank you for reminding me of something I already forgot. Um, I think you just have, it's something that you have to work at. Like there's, definitely times when I like flirt and I, if I'm like on my phone flirting, there are definitely be times where I'm like, Oh, I think that might have gotten misinterpreted as something not worse. Cause that sounds like I'm like James Charles is saying up in here, but like it, it comes off different when you're reading it versus like when you're saying something flirtily, like flirting vocally versus digitally is two very different games as we've heard through my experience today. Um, I wish, I wish sending like voice memos or voice messages wasn't, wasn't as so like... serial killer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's haunting when you hear someone's voice for the first time. <laughs> and it's like, you can tell that they like, you can like immediately tell they have roommates. They're like, Hey, so, <laughs> and you know that they're like under their comforter, like talking. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. But that sounds more flirty. That's good. No, yeah. that sounds like you're literally at my front door with a knife. <laughs> Hi. A lot of the voicemails we get sound like that. I mean, <laughs> to unhinge. <laughs> <laughs> Drag them, Sam. Drag no. them. I'm, I'm like, oh, kidding. are their parents listening? It's cute. Sorry. Oh, that is cute. <laughs> um, Breaking news. Sam says listeners are weird. <laughs> no, I didn't. I love them. Do you realize how many I listen to? No, I mean, truly, Sam. I have a parasocial relationship with the listeners. 
Oh, that's kind of cute. I love that, Sam. You are. Oh, I love you so much. Um, I yeah, just I mean, you're gonna the way you're gonna flirt with guys and the way you're gonna flirt with girls are gonna be very different. For men, you're gonna have to talk much slower for them to understand you. Um, and also just understand there's gonna be a learning curve to flirting with a whole new a whole new uh, uh, ocean of fish, if you will. And I'm not, yeah, okay. <laughs> a cornucopia of. A cornucopia of flounder. <laughs> no, but I mean, I yeah, I just think take risks and there's going to be times where you over might overstep and you'll learn and I don't know. And again, I think worse comes to worse. You just say, sorry, this is, I'm still new to flirting with women. But is it women or men male specific, or is it just person specific? Because people differ within. No, the way I flirt with men and the way I flirt with women are two very different lived experiences. Mm. Like with men, I don't give a shit. I'm like, you're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> but like with women, I know that they there's been so much historical trauma and just being a woman is has been so much harder than being a man in terms of constantly getting catcalled and sexualized and this and that. So it's like, I approach it much differently because of that in a way, like I will absolutely objectify a man, but I won't take that same approach. I understand like a general approach, but I'm saying like within, if you're within a group of men talking to different men, they're all going to have different situations. Well, of course, Jake. I mean, of course. That goes with any piece of advice that has multiple variables. No, no. I mean, but with her, though, it sounds like she's worrying herself too much. Like, I think the most important thing is for her to be her. Who isn't worrying themselves too much this day, these days? If you're not worrying yourself too much, give me your fucking therapist number, bitch. <laughs> I'm just saying if she should be proud of who she is. And if she's in a stage of exploration... Then have fun. and Yeah, and, but it's not think, that straightforward to just be like, don't be depressed, just smile. Like She has a learning curve that she's going to have to achieve, and that's going to be a personal comfort zone for her. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I wish her lots of success. Yeah, be open to it. Don't count yourself out before you even like start. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I'm so confused where we landed, but... Apparently, we're on the ground, so let's hear another one. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hey, girl. Uh, my name's Lily, and I've been watching you for like 10 years. Ah, um, Lily! I thought you wanted us to ask you dating advice. Yes. And I just kind of want your opinion on how you feel about people who... I'm good at giving my opinion. I got um, you. How do I say this? People who are cheating with your partner, and they call you or like DM you on Instagram, and they're like... Just, like, from woman to woman, like, I just want you to know, like, he's sleeping with me, too. Like, I kind of feel like that's, like, shady and not actually, like, a good person thing to do. Like, I feel like people don't actually do that for the right reason. So I just wanted to see what your thoughts on that were. That's Bye. interesting. Thank you. Um, I mean, I think there, it's not, like, anything going to be that black and white. I think some people in the, I've heard situations of people saying, Oh my God, I had no idea he was in a committed relationship. Like never mentioned it, no pictures of you guys, et cetera. So I just thought he was single and I wanted to let you know he's been cheating on you with me. Like, I think that's totally valid. Granted, if they continue to sleep together, then I think that's, that's like a nuanced area because on one hand, like, yeah, I, that you deserve to know what your partner or soon to be ex partner, if you're fine with, if you're not fine with that is up to, but then it's like, sh that's kind of shitty for them to keep doing it. If the, it is that like from woman to woman. Um, but then also it's like, okay, well he's going to go and do that to her then. So, I mean, <sighs> But if you're saying, like, from woman to woman, he's sleeping with me, and it's, like, a 
step down, honey. He's mine. Yeah, I think that that's like so wildly unhinged and like disgusting. <laughs> it's like have some decency a little bit. I mean, unless it's someone that you like absolutely despise, then it's like, haha, I took your man. But even so, that's so insane. <laughs> I'm like Still trying to truth. find. The, the truth is the truth at the end of the day, though. Thank you so much. That was really prolific. The truth <laughs> is the truth at the end of the day. At the end of well, the day. Well, regardless of like how you hear it or how it's phrased, whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I love you, Justin. Oh my God, that was like something I would say. <laughs> well, elaborate elaborate on it though. It doesn't matter the source of the information. If she's if you're the person you're with, if you're in, I guess in this terms, I'm thinking they're in a committed relationship or whatever. Because the term cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then it doesn't matter who you're hearing it from. Like you're still getting the truth out of the situation, and you're then you can make a decision. That's so interesting. It's like it almost doesn't matter what that person is saying or their motive or anything. It's like you know now. It's still information. That they're in – that they're – I almost said infertile. Um, infidelitying. They're infidelitying. They're infidelitying. <laughs> they're in, yeah. But I, I've also Adult, – Adulterous. <laughs> they're being adulterous. So, I mean, you have that information. So then I guess at that point it's like it doesn't really matter – Who's telling you? Because at the end of the day, you're either going to be okay with it or you're not, and then you have your answer. Yeah, I've yeah, I've I thought this was an interesting one because I feel like I'm remembering stories from my past and like friends or people who have done this, and I uh, to reach out and it's like um, I don't know if it's to really help the person in the relationship or mostly they're just pissed off. They're like, oh, this guy was cheating on me. and I, I, No one knew. And so they're mad and they're uh, like reaching out to the girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. I feel like that might be part of it. Like it's part of their guilt, like they're getting rid of their guilt, right? Like yeah. it's, it's like they're purging their own guilt. Oh, they're like kind of washing their hands from it. And they're like, well, I did my part. That's so interesting. Yeah. Which is like still respectable because they could just say nothing if they know the information. Yeah, sometimes a person already knows. You know, like I guess if they're telling you regardless, that's pretty respectful. Even if they're doing it in like a dangling it in your face way. Because they could just not say anything and let you still suffer or like let it go further down the road and you still not know. You be in the dark. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> But they're not doing it for the person, though. In that situation, they're doing it for themselves. And but that's at the same time, they're still choosing to tell the person whether their intention is to gloat or to actually be helpful. Or, like, blow up their life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's like, at the same time, wouldn't you rather have your life be blown up five years early so you have five years less of, like being committed yeah, you're helping I them think salvage that's what, time. How yeah you're it, but it's yeah like every... i mean at the time it's never gonna feel good yeah yeah <sighs> wow guys who knew that the view looked so diverse <laughs> 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 i literally i'm like what cosmo magazine are we fucking <laughs> doing right now i mean jesus christ <laughs> Uh, do we have another voicemail or is, have we run dry? Yeah. Okay, let's do one more voicemail and we'll call it a day because I got to get back on, on Raya. <laughs> hey, Chris. Um, it's Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Like, you know me personally, but whatever. Um, How I do? I need dating advice. Hit me. So I am <laughs> Same, though. 22 and I'm an adult virgin. But... <laughs> Anyway, like, because of that, I just have, like, this insane fear that if I, like, try to date a guy or girl, they're, like, you know, I, like, to help them. I've never, like, been with anyone. I've, like, hardly ever, like, made out with anyone. And they're just going to be, like, completely turned off by it and then just, like, ghost me or just be, like, oh, like, this isn't going to work out. See ya. So I'm just, like, is that really what's going to happen? Or is this just, like, some crazy mental block that I'm dealing with? So, yeah. I personally would really like to lose my virginity before I graduate college in May. So, thanks. That's 
you know, kind of all over the place. But girls, you, can help me. you called into okay, the bye. right place. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Um, now, this is honestly interesting that you brought this up because this is something I actually wanted to bring up in this episode. And maybe I touched on it slightly. But I feel very similarly to that even today as we're recording this. I obviously did not have sex or even date anyone in high school. And I felt like that put me so behind and I felt like embarrassed that, oh my God, if I'm inexperienced or bad in bed, like then that's just like, it's going to end and be embarrassing and all of that. And here's the fucking gag. Everybody started not knowing and being awkward and all of this. And I think, first of all, my therapist always talks about cognitive distortions, future telling and like predicting. You don't know that it's going to go poorly. You could turn into like, literally, you could be like a fucking fire porn star. Who knows? You know, you will never know. But you also have to give yourself the grace of you wouldn't, start your first day at NASA and know how to fly a rocket ship. Or maybe maybe you fucking would. Don't quote me on that. All the NASA scientists watching. (laughs) But, um, you know, like, it's never gonna be perfect on your first try. And if it is, then Jesus Christ, the rest of your life is literally downhill. But I, I, I totally feel you because it, it's been pretty dry over here. And I absolutely fear that the next time I hook up with someone or X, Y, and Z, it's going to be like mortifying that it's like, oh my God, Chris Clemens is bad in bed, which not that that fucking means anything, but it's like, you don't want that to go around town and all of that. So I, I so get it, but don't let that, don't let that like, Don't let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Cinderella story. Boom. That quote has still held true. Uh, But for real, I mean, it is kind of true. And I think, again, I mean, I hate saying this, but like be upfront and be honest if you want to, because I feel like that sucks any of the judgment out of the room because you've already owned it in a way. When you come in being like, oh, it might, I was literally had a meeting yesterday where I was like, guys, I have a mood board. I don't, it's like, I'm good at making a mood board and this is just not it. Set people's expectations for what they're in for because if they still agree to do it and you've laid it out there, then they can't really say shit. I mean, they can because they probably will, but it shouldn't matter then because that reflects them at that point and not you. But I mean, it's, I literally, like, I'm 30 this year, and I literally feel like the 30-year-old virgin. Granted, I'm not a virgin, but I really fucking feel it. And I feel this voicemail so much harder than I'm able to, like, eloquently say. But you, and this is advice I should honestly be telling myself as well, but you can't let that freak you out. And also, 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 when you get to the moment where you lose that that ever glorious V card, um, you can just the communication be like, if something's not great, like let me know. That, that's a huge part of having sex is communication. Like it's okay to be like, ah, there's a little too much teeth. You know, it's not going to feel great that you put them through a cheese grater, but it's at least like. Okay, got it. Thank you. Like, there's something endearing and kind of nice about that. And I, I was going to add uh, maybe air on the side of like generosity too. In like, because then you could the- give as many BJ's as you can. Wait, what? No, because you could be like, well, at least they tried. What? I mean, I- <laughs> yeah, actually, don't be generous in the, in the sack. I guess be hateful. Be terrible. Just don't do shit. Get your nut and dip. <laughs> we have podcast merch now. Get a nut and leave. Oh my god! No, but I be just, a generous lover. No, I, I I do see what you're saying with that, and I think that that's very accurate as well. Is just yeah, be generous. 
Well, don't worry about being judged for your performance because it's like you're connecting with someone. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I think there's also too much expectation on this one too. Like, you know, what if, what if it turns out that, you know, she's great and her lover's terrible or it wasn't of everything that she was waiting for. Like yeah. just because you lose the V card to somebody doesn't mean that's the person you have to be with forever. Like maybe. Oh my God. I don't even remember who took my V card. <laughs> really? <laughs> I literally don't. I think it was a stranger. <laughs> Uh, God, that's so wrong. <laughs> but also, but also, I think if you are an experience and you do have this mission, I'm not saying hook up with a stranger, but like make sure that they're safe and they're they've had all their checkups and all of that, obviously. But if you don't care about it being this special thing, because I didn't, I'm like, virginity is just a stupid fucking construct that we've created to like yet be another thing that we should feel bad about ourselves for like like so that's why i did have sex with a stranger at first because i was like if it sucks i'll never see them again and if it's great maybe this will be the next great thing clearly it wasn't the latter but uh i just i think if it means that much to you to lose it and not as much of who it's with then because if it's with someone meaningful, then they should be understanding. And that is that. Chris's court is closed. Um, yeah, this was a fun episode. It fi- kind of felt good. I'm a very like private person with all of this because I'm someone who's like wants to know what the tea is before I tell people like, ooh. But my friends have been like, Chris, no, that's part of life is not everything's going to be perfect and not everything's going to work out. Like, we just want to know. And I'm like, okay, so true. I find it so embarrassing that I literally cannot get a single person, but whatever. Um, but it kind of felt good to talk about and just, it's something that we're all going through and suck the air out of it all and maybe suck something else. So, um, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. I definitely think we're going to do more dating episodes because I think there's just so much. We've opened the can of worms, girls. Um, so yeah, be sure to rate and review on Hinge with Chris Clemens, as well as subscribe to it wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like video episodes, youtube.com slash Chris. Love y'all. Be sure to check out the links down below. And um, as always, thank you, Sam, Justin, and Jake for being here. And okay, thank you so much, <laughs> Justin, for being here. God, if you're watching, you'll understand what I mean. Oh my God, it's so funny that we're doing this because I literally was the host of a dating show pilot that I filmed. And it's so funny that I've literally never been in a relationship. Anyways, thank you and goodbye. (laughs) 